painted this canvas. First, I painted it black, okay? Because gold really looks fancy and really metallic-y if you put black down first, okay? So I put one coat of Anita's Black on this canvas, all right? Then I came in and I did three coats of Modern Masters Olympic Gold. Now this is a quart, I think it's a quart, 32 ounces. That's a, I don't know, is that a half a gallon? Yeah, no, that's a quart. Don't get me to line, I don't know. This is something I bought online because I, I like to use a lot of gold, but they have the little bitty six ounce bottles of Modern Masters metallic paint in Hobby Lobby in the art department. But you don't have to use this gold. You could use any metallic gold that they have at the craft stores. Uh, one other gold that I really like is the Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. Thank you, Amy. I just don't know. And also one of my big favorites, and you know how much I love this because I use it a lot, is the Decolart Dazzling Metallics Splendid Gold. They're all very similar in color. And, um, Oh, they're, I'm sorry, I got super distracted. <laughs> they're all very similar in color. And this one is a little less opaque, the pure gold. You might have to do an extra coat, but they all seem to be really close in the opacity of the paint. But any metallic is going to be a little thinner and you're gonna have to use multiple coats when you do um, a metallic, <laughs> you like this? When you do a metallic, you're probably always gonna have to do multiple coats because they are just, they just don't cover as well as regular old paint, all right? But I love, yay, Pat! I love the Modern Masters. To me, this particular paint is very opaque. And like I said, black and then three coats of this, very, very, me too, Catherine, very good coverage. You can tell it's a really great coverage. So let me tell you what's in my head, okay? Three, one coat of black, three coats of gold. What's in my head is navy blue pumpkin. Thank you for the stars. A navy blue pumpkin with a gold stem on a gold background. That's where my brain is. I'll show you the pumpkin I drew out. And I got this from a pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. They have this squatty little pumpkin at Hobby Lobby that the when you're looking at it front on, the stem is facing you. It's not sticking off the top. So it looks like it's leaning over, kind of like, you know, a pumpkin you might find in a pumpkin patch. Thank you for the stars, ladies. So this is the pumpkin that we, and you can see, I made a mess with my black. So, um, what we're gonna do is trace this pumpkin. I'm gonna skip the stem for now because I think I'm gonna use this piece of glass. Hang on, it. Hang on. Somebody forgot to tell me to plug my phone in. <laughs> I'm gonna wait for it to catch up. Give me some thumbs up if you can hear me. You can hear me? Good, because my phone went on low battery mode and y'all know what happens when that happens. Okay, so I wanna paint, I'm gonna trace my pumpkin and I'm gonna paint it in navy blue and we'll do some highlighting with a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And then I'm going to Get, I'm gonna use this stem, if at all possible. That's right, Sherry, <laughs> thank you for the stars. If at all possible, I want to use this um, piece of glass, if it looks really well. So I think what I'll do is cr I'll trace out just that inside section right there, 
and then that will sit and poke right out of it. Okay, this glass piece came in a huge bag of um, glass bits from a glass blower. So if you have a glass blower in your town, go and ask them for scraps, okay? That's where that comes from. It's like they're blowing glass and it's on their stick and they cut it off and that's what's left, okay? But on the tracer, if you're in the membership, on the tracer, you're gonna have this stem traced out on your tracer so you can paint that if you don't have any little stemmy things. Somebody posted an angry face three times. Let's talk about what you're angry about. Let's talk about your anger. Who's mad? Who's mad and what? Oh, there's another one. Who is mad? Somebody is really angry. Are you mad at me? What you mad about? Let's talk. If you're gonna post angry buttons, at least let's talk about what you're mad about. All right, so in the meantime, here is what I'm going to use to trace. It's white graphite paper, okay? So normally I would use black to trace onto my canvas, but I'm gonna use white because it's not gonna leave set. Actually, I think I am gonna use black because we're doing navy, navy blue. So I think I will use black, but I'll tell you about this anyway. When you're working on a dark surface, there is, I hope so, because I don't like making people mad. I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> and I don't want nobody to be mad. If you're mad, tell me. We can fix it. So this is sewing transfer paper. So if you're working on a dark surface and you, don't, you can't use this because of your dark surface, then you can use this Walmart in the sewing department. Yes, I know. Um, I've hit the angry button on accident before. <laughs> it was like six times though. I was like, oh, somebody's really upset with me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace out my pumpkin and I am going to just do that center section where the stem is and I'm not gonna do the actual stem itself. Hey, ladies, hope nobody's mad. So let's lay this in. Now to do this part, if you're new, you can use a stylus, okay? This is just like a pen without ink. It's got a little ballpoint on the end, or you can just use a pen. It doesn't matter, okay? These are pretty cheap at the craft stores, but if you don't wanna spend that money, I get it. Just use a ballpoint pen. So I'm gonna start, so I can keep up, I'm gonna start in the pumpkin section where my stem is poking through. And I am just going to trace all the lines, let me peek under, yes. Remember a couple weeks ago when I traced it backwards? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I changed my mind about the white paper. So, I'm just gonna trace my little pumpkin sections with my stylus. And I'm holding my paper down a little bit too, but I'm holding it very lightly because I don't want to transfer any of the black onto the rest of my canvas. I only want the black to be where I'm tracing. So very carefully tracing around my little sections. We are gonna paint, because we're using dark colors, we are gonna paint and highlight shadow one section at a time. So go get yourself a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a beer, a glass of tea, whatever you need. I'm gonna go around the inside, skip the stem, because we might be here a few minutes because we're gonna do one section at a time, okay? So let's see how. Let's peek and make sure it's all traced. Perfect, looks great. Let's put this away. 
And now I can peel this off. Now that I've checked, that's right, Jody, one of each. I'm stuck with just tea today. So, and it's very strong for some reason. So I am going, now I need to figure out which one of these blues I'm going to use, okay? <laughs> That's okay, Jackie. I just wanted to make sure somebody wasn't mad at me and, you know, if we needed to have a talk. So I have three blues that I brought with me, okay? And we're going to check them all. The first one is called Prussian Blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of this Prussian Blue and I'm going to just put it over here on... Let me get a icky brush. I'm just going to put it over here. He is not my assistant tonight. He's actually, I believe, cutting my grass, which works for me as well, Joanne. So this is the Prussian blue. So let's just put a little bit of this out. And it will be multiple coats, so it should be darker than that. We may do a second coat on there. When it's on the white, it really shows up crazy. This is called navy blue. Thank you, Rhonda. This is navy blue. I don't think this is gonna be dark enough, but it might be. That's the second one. Option two. This is called deep midnight blue. I love blues. I don't know that this is going to be the right color. It's kind of a smoky blue. I think it's gonna be between those. Let's just get rid of this one now. Let's get rid of Deep Midnight. And right, Charlene? And my yard is not small, thank you. It is not small. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put a second coat. I'm gonna put these up here. Let's put a quick second coat on this. Oh, I think that's gonna be it. Let's put a second coat on this one. It's kind of a smoky blue too, but I'm thinking number one. What do you think? Number one, which was Prussian. Thank you, Christine. First blue is fantastic. Let's use it, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. Let's put this top back on before Cindy makes a mess. And I'm gonna turn this back over so that everybody knows what we're using. And I'm gonna grab my plate. I don't know where my plate went, but let's dump this and use this one. And I'm gonna put this blue, the Prussian blue on my plate. And I'm gonna put a little bit of black. Thank you, Charlotte. And a little tiny bit of white. Yeah, I think so too. I am hoping this is gonna be as pretty as it is in my head, because in my head, I'm just like, oh, I want it to be gorgeous so much. Okay, so we're gonna start with one little section at a time, all right? So I'm gonna just go ahead and start right here with this little section where the stem would come up. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, um, I'm, going, I'm going to, well, hello, mister. I'm gonna put a coat on and I'm gonna leave a little space between my sections because this is gonna take multiple coats. I got water in my brush. Hi. And then I'm gonna leave a little section so I know where my pumpkin sections are. I'm gonna leave a little space till we do our next coat. So let's do that. See how that's gonna take more than one coat. Thank you, Linda. Hey, Jerry. So let's, I'm gonna go all the way around and just do a thin coat bracelets are bugging me. A thin coat on all the sections. I'm gonna leave a little tiny line between them. 
because over the top of this gold, definitely going to take more than one coat. So y'all bear with me. One. <laughs> this is going to be so pretty in my head. It is beautiful. So I'm hoping it translates onto the canvas this way. So let me pull it down. Gotta be very careful and hold my mouth right because if I don't, it will mess up. It will definitely mess it up if I don't hold my mouth right. Right, and see I messed it up because I wanted to hold my mouth right. I was running my mouth. And let's do this one, just like a little gapper. And around the edge, and I'm just painting right up next to my tracer line. Just gonna keep going. I love the pink pumpkins too. I'm gonna turn my canvas so that I don't get my hand in paint. And you see how I'm leaving a little tiny line between my sections so I know where my sections are. Now normally if you're painting with lighter colors you'll still be able to see your tracer line, but with these dark colors, it's gonna be a little more difficult. So, I'm just gonna cheat and leave a little line. This is gonna be so much fun. Yes. the edge is making me nervous. Let's follow my line. Ooh. Now you see why I went ahead and painted it gold ahead of time? Because if we had had to do three coats of a coat of black and three coats of gold before we started this, we'd really be in a fix, wouldn't we? <laughs> All right, let me go over here and do this edge. Just fill in a little. And we're just gonna keep going all the way around. fill in where we traced. It's like coloring in a coloring book. This is going to be so much fun, y'all. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this already. Yesterday, when we were doing those texture pumpkins, I thought they were gonna be my favorite pumpkins of the year, but they may have just got trumped by the navy pumpkin. We shall see. This one, follow it around. Love watching you work, Steve. <laughs> and we're going to get really close. 
close to the edge. If this turns out as good as it is in my head, it's gonna be so pretty. All right, let's do this way. way get close to the edge one last one then we're gonna do some blow drying is it not a fun shape I like doing I'm tired of doing just normal shaped pumpkins you know just a almost a round with so I like to do like jack them up a little and paint a couple how they actually grow in the wild so let's hit this with our heat gun real quick get it dry so we can do another coat hopefully it will only take two coats we'll see in a second let's get it dry Isn't it fun, Joanne? Almost done. It's a little wet still on those edges where it's a little thicker. All right, now let's let that cool off for one second. We don't want to paint on hot material or hot canvas. We don't want that to be cooled down. Cool down, man, cool down. I'll take a sip of tea while we wait. It is kind of cool like it is, isn't it, Charlotte? <laughs> it is kind of cool like it is, just with a little bit of work, maybe. Yeah, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna see what we can do. I'm gonna do another coat of blue, and if it looks like it's covering really well, we'll add a little bit of black around the left side, teeny bit of white around the other side, and then do each section one at a time. It is a Seek One heat gun from Amazon. And it has two heat, a low and a high, and you can turn it up or down here as well. I love it. It's my new heat gun, and I'm completely in love with it. <laughs> okay, so let's do it again. We're gonna start here, and let's go ahead and get one of these. I'm gonna put this here just to hold my paint so it doesn't tip over. Let's see if this is gonna take more than two coats. Let's see. I think, y'all, I think two may get it. Uh-oh. Two may be our lucky number. Let me try. Okay, so there is my section. So I'm gonna offload onto my napkin over here. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black just on the tip of my brush. See that black? And I'm gonna come around just on the left side and bring a little bit of black around. I'm gonna offload. I'm gonna get a teeny bit of white. I'm gonna go back and forth. I don't want it to be white. I want it to be a shade of that blue. So I'm gonna come back around on the opposite side and add that light tone right to that side. Oh my goodness, y'all, look at that. Look, ah. 
and completely in love. That is spectacular. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna offload the white and we're gonna do that one pumpkin section at a time, okay? Just hopefully it won't take forever. Looks great, doesn't it? So let's fill in that second coat. Offload, get a little bit of black, go back and forth, blend it into your brush a little. So we'll go right up next to this. Add that little bit of black there. Get it off. Go into your white and peep and repeat for every section. So let's do this. Oh my goodness. Don't feel like it has to be perfect. If it's a little messy, it's even better. All right, we're just gonna keep on keeping on. What do you think so far? So far, so good? And notice I'm filling in the gap on the left side of each section as I go. So there's no gold gap between my little sections. Offload, start with black. Do black on that left side. Get it off, white, black, white, blue, black, white, blue. We'll go white on this side. And next, this is so much fun. I love it. It is exactly what I was hoping for. I'm digging it. I'm gonna have to make 10 of these because I'm gonna wanna keep this one. And somebody's gonna wanna buy it. So good. It does look velvety, doesn't it? It even looks kind of velvety in person. Go back and forth. And start on the outside edge. Don't be afraid to bring it in a little. A little whites. On this edge. Afraid to make it a little messy. Oh my goodness. Next. This is super fun. So once we're done with this, we're gonna revisit last night's little carved pumpkins. And we're gonna resin and add pretties to all of our pumpkins tonight. So we gotta decide. Can't talk and paint at the same time because especially when I'm trying to do something tight because I'm a mess. But we're gonna do all those pumpkins, the ones that we did that were sculpted. Oops, got my arm in that. Get a little black again, back and forth. And go right on that edge. Oops, 
Hang on. I got out of line a little, so let me fix it. Let's get our whites. And the key to this is this. Once you get that white on the tiny corner, is on your plate or your palette, go back and forth to blend it in your bristles and then come back over the top of your wet paint to blend that in. Working on wet paint and, I'm gonna go a little bit more, and making sure it's blended into your bristles is the key to that. All right, go into the blue again. This is the big fat one in the center. Will you turn that, why, I put that on 75 and the air is still blowing. And it's blowing on my piece and it's drying my paint as fast as I can get it on my canvas. I'm gonna have to get one of those diverters so it doesn't blow straight on me while I'm painting because that is, that's a problem. I mean, I put it on like 74 or 75, you'd think it wouldn't come on. Yeah, something along those lines. Okay, so my black is going on that side. I wanna make sure that's still wet because it is the wind or the wind. <laughs> that air is blowing hard on me. So I'm gonna come back before I do my black and just make sure that's still wet. Go in my black, go back and forth, and then come in with my black. And this is a big pumpkin section. So I'm gonna get a little more black than normal and bring it over about a third of the way into my pumpkin, just to give it a little extra darkness right there. I'm gonna offload. I'm gonna go into my blue again because this side of my pumpkin's dry and I don't wanna blend that white for sure into dry paint. Offload, let's get some white, go back and forth. Let's come in and add that highlight. I'm gonna bring it out a little further because it's that big fat First section. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna rinse just to give myself a fresh brush. We're about halfway there. Okay, next section's pretty big too. So we'll get right up next to that. Ooh, I had to hold my mouth right for sure to get that done. Thank you. All right, let's go into the black. Go back and forth. We're gonna get a good bit of that black because that's a fairly good section too. So let's go around, kind of follow it a little bit around the bottom and don't be afraid to extend it out into your pumpkin a little. All right, now I'm gonna get white, go back and forth and let's hit the side while it's still wet. clean brush made a big difference too. I'm gonna to get a tiny bit more white and just give myself a little bit, all right, on into the pumpkin. I'm loving this. All right, here we 
original color again. I have to remember to get right up over that gold where I left that little line of gold. Look at our black, and we'll fill in that side, come around a little bit, offload, offload is key as well, so you don't have a whole lot of the wrong color or that darker color on your brush. So that it doesn't blend properly. So come in, add that white. What you don't want is a harsh line. You want it to be very blended and soft. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Two more. This is so much fun. I'm gonna have an entire blue pumpkin patch in my studio. My mother, I don't know if she's watching. She watches sometimes, but she is probably gonna have a fit for this because everything in her house is blue. And I mean everything. Let's go into black. Bring it around. White. Last section, the royal pumpkin, that's cool. All right, let's do this last piece. And then we gotta decide about our stem, if we need to paint it, or if we're gonna use my glass stem, or what we're gonna do. Black first. And a little bit of white. Oh my goodness, let's check it out. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at this. Is that not spectacular? O M A J. Okay, so I'm going to draw this really quick because we have some decisions to make. And I don't want my paint to be wet because I want to lay out my glass stem. So let's draw this. Oh my goodness. See, I told you to let your friends know what we were doing because they were going to want to be here. <laughs> this might be my favorite so far. 
our stem. Yes, it would, wouldn't it, Sherry? I may have to do that. You like how I sing my words? <laughs> I do it when I get excited. Oh, I know, Donna. My mother's going to have a fit. She'll be over here stealing it. She'll certainly be over here stealing it. I want to get that cooled off. So I'm trying to decide, what do you guys think about the stem? What we could do, it's kind of a goldy brown, but what we could do is paint inside here with a little bit of a brown, reddish brown with a little bit of gold on top. Make and give it some definition and then lay this right on top of there. Do you, what do you think? What do you think? I think yes. I think yes. We won't do a, um, painted stem, but we're going to do the painted little where the stem attaches. We're going to start with a little bit of this color, which is traditional burnt umber. And hopefully I won't mess this up. Well, I'm doing it. If, if you hate it, <laughs> We'll figure it out. We're gonna add a little gold to it as well. So let's do a little bit of this ready brown over the gold. Trying to be very careful. Let's get that in. I want that to dry because I want to do another quick coat. And we'll do a tiny bit of shading and then highlight with a little bit of gold. We may put some, may have some glass seed beads we can put there too. I'm gonna have to peek. Let me hit that for two seconds. Well, that's my gun. Now, I'm going to put some um, shadowing on the bottom, probably with the same color that I'm using right now. Anytime I leave a pumpkin floating, the haters on Facebook come after me like nobody's business. Okay, now I'm gonna grab, I think I'm just gonna offload this. I'm gonna get the tiniest bit of black on my brush. Water it down a little, and I'm just gonna come around each little section. So it's just not a big blob of brown. Get a little bit of black on there. Bear with me. Literally. Just 
barely getting some on my brush. All right, let me turn it back around. Oh my goodness, y'all. All right, I'm gonna do, there's a little bit of a purple and iridescent in that stem right there. Oh gosh. Hang on. And a little bit of shine too. Hang on, I'm futzing. I put a little bit of wa of um a little bit. Hey, will you do me a favor? Will you go wash that out before it dries on there? That's the only decent brush I have like that. Here's my gold from my plates. Obviously have way too much on here, but I'm gonna load a little bit on this little baby brush and just add a little bit dry brushed over the top of what I just did. Just get a little bit on your brush and then just blend it in. <laughs> I used to get live doing, or used to get nervous doing it too, because I always thought, I, what if I mess up? But you know what? The few lives I've done where I did mess up were probably some of my best ones. Because, you know, we're, we're all human, and it's nice to see somebody do something human every once in a while. All right, I'm starting to like that. Starting to blend a little better, and it's starting to look like it's kind of goes together. I'm gonna jump up. Let me do one little thing here. Oh, that was way too much gold. I'm gonna see if I have these beads that I want. Hang on one second. I'll show you my stash. Maybe use this and I'll show you my stash. This is my stash of seed beads. Oh, so let me peek through and see what we have. That's black. Thank you, love. That would be pretty, but they're too big. Um, yellow, too big, too big. So I'm thinking I have, I don't see anything that I think seed bead wise is going to work for this, but look, here's what I have. This glass from Michael's. So I'm thinking about putting a little bit of that here in the center on one side. And this will allow some of that paint that we just used to kind of come through. And then, butt it up to that. Look at there. That looks pretty good, y'all. That's funny, Charlene. I have a lot. I, I have a problem. I have a seed bead addiction. So... It looks better in person. Let me kind of hold it up. It does show up better in person than when it's laying really tight, when it's far away from the camera. So here's what I'm gonna do, because I wanna pile that up a little. I'm gonna leave that there, and I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to this little pile that I have already. so that it, I can add a few more without them just falling all over the place. I'm gonna stick this back. And I should have shadowed that first. Should have shaded. That's all right, we'll get it. Where's my little pokey thing? I'm gonna put a couple of these down here. I am digging this. 
so much, y'all. Let's get that. Get up here where it belongs. Okay. Why don't y'all see this close and personal. Now, again, these little teeny glass nuggets came from Michael's in the floral department. Okay? So, let's put those aside. And look at this close up. Look at that stem. That kind of helps anchor the stem, and it looks really good, y'all. Okay, so let's put this here. I want to get a little bit of a larger brush and my brown, but mm -hmm, hang on. I need a brush that is decent. Okay, so I'm going to use this brush, which is like a one inch. I'm going to wet it. I'm going to offload the water. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of clear at the bottom. I'm going to offload the water. I'm going to get a little bit of this brown on the corner of my brush. I'm going to go back and forth. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start kind of in the middle. And I'm going to come around the bottom of my pumpkin and then just bring it off to the side. And then we're going to just kind of fill that in a little bit. See what I did there? Just to give it the pumpkin like it's sitting on something. And you could even take it up a little further if you wanted to, just however high you want it to be. All right, let's do it again. Wet my brush. I'm gonna get a little brown right on that corner. I'm gonna go back and forth on my plate to blend it in. And I'm gonna come around I'll we'll start on this side. I'll we'll come around my pumpkin. Because if it's sitting on a table, it's creating a little shadow. All right, hopefully that is about the same. <laughs> Looks close. I'm going to get a little bit more and just add a little streak or two around here. All right. Oh, my goodness, y'all. I love this so much. I wish I, I almost wish I had sketched a little bit bigger. I may do a bigger one. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. That looks so good. All right, I'm gonna just try to hit that bottom edge with my blow dryer. I don't want to. I don't want to hit my glass, so I'm gonna come this way and just hit this. It does, doesn't it? Heather, do you think Mom is gonna try to steal this from me? I'm gonna have to hide it. that dry and now let me grab let me see my behind me stash and see if I have some scar fire I don't think I do will you get me a bag of star fire really dude <laughs> you ain't got no sense at all <sighs> grab me a bag of star fire pretty please from the thingy and I think I am going to, I didn't think I was going to do this, but I think I am going to just give it a little bit of lines, just a little, and maybe, thank you, love, You're so good to me, uh, on the inside and maybe around the edges. So give me one sec, and I'm going to use this pen. It's called a Master's Touch. That is a Hobby Lobby brand, Graphic 0.5. And I'm just going to come in and make a few lines on the inside. 
around the inside sections of my pumpkin. Inside. Now we'll do the outside as well. So come around. This pin, I press too hard on it. And it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to pin. Hang on. Can't really see this on video as I'm looking up at the camera, but in person it does pop a little. I'll kind of show you a little close up. See where you can see some of the pin strokes, but it's on a dark color, so it's very minimal. All right, so let's talk about this. Let's talk about adding glass to the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit heavier on the corners, I think. This is bigger glass. I hate it when we get these. Ugh, what is going on? Look at that, that's ridiculous. Nobody can use that. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I don't like it. I want baby ones. And when we do the resin over the top of this, it will show the gold through. Look at these terrible pieces. Yeah. I'm trying to get these big ones off. Those are only really good for great big art pieces. I do like them for big art pieces, but not for little ones. So I'm gonna add just a thin line of, if I can dig out some smaller pieces along that edge. You mean up here, Joanne? I don't know, I kinda like it. I think we're gonna resin it. And we may add some seed beads like on the top. And like I said, I wish I had made it a little bit bigger because I think it would have filled up the canvas more, but it's a little late to worry about that. And I don't know of anything that we could add that wouldn't take away from what we've done. So we're gonna leave it be. We're gonna let it be what it is. I promise you, I won't have a problem selling it. So I don't normally place glass. Y'all know that about me. I like to just toss it in and see what happens. But this bag has so many big old pieces. I'm having to kind of sort through. All right. So. Once we resin, we may add some seed beads to it. We put all these monsters back in. And put that back there. So we're gonna resin this one first. I'm gonna grab my sticks. Where are they? Brought her. And this is so pretty. I think I'm going to just, I'm going to go ahead because here's what we're going to do. I'm going to resin this one, but we're also going to resin this and potentially add some seed beads and we are going to resin on this and potentially add some seed beads. And we are going to resin on this 
and potentially add some seed beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and make, I think, I literally think I can do this with like less than two ounces. And these two baby ones are gonna take just a spoonful. So I think I'm gonna mix three ounces of resin which is gonna be a little more difficult than normal because what I'll actually have to do, because there's no one and a half ounce line, is I'll have to do 50 milliliters and 100 milliliters, which is just over three ounces. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna make just over three ounces. And I will, once we get this one done, I'll tell you exactly how much it took for that for this actual piece, okay? So let's do it first. And let me get my gloves on. I love the textured ones too. I really wanna do some more of those. They're so easy and they're so like, you know, you don't have to stress about them being perfect because there's nothing perfect about them. They're just easy and mistake proof almost. So I plan on doing several more of those. Okay, so I am going to grab my resin and I'm gonna use my hardener first. And I'm gonna add 50 milliliters, which is about an ounce and a half, a little more than that, into my cup. And I gotta be careful so I don't over pour. wait for it to kind of catch up. So that was 50 milliliters. And then we'll do 50 millimeters of the resin. These bottles, look at these. Aren't they terrible? So we have 100 milliliters total, which is about three ounces. So let me let that catch up with itself. Almost just a teeny tiny bit more. All right, so that looks like it's just right. So we're gonna mix this for three minutes. So wish I had made that a little bit bigger, but it is what it is, we're going with it. Okay, so this is Art Resin, it's a three minute mix, 50-50, 50% 50, 50, 50 hardener, 50% resin, and we are gonna stir for three minutes. We're not gonna beat it to death. We're not gonna whip it. We're not gonna blend it really fast. We're gonna gently stir, scraping the sides and the bottom of our container for three minutes. So some, whoever's timing me, go. Thank you, Peggy, that's sweet. This is just, I saw a blue pumpkin it was literally like one of those plastic three-dimensional pumpkins in a store window, and it had a gold stem. And I thought, OMG, I need to paint a navy blue pumpkin on gold, because it was so beautiful. Uh, Rebecca, find a glass blower in your area and ask them for their scraps. That's where you're gonna find these kinds of pieces. Uh, they are this. Can you see that? The gloves in the kits are Amazon, all right? Nitrile glove, disposable glove, powder free, non-sterile. That is what is in the kit. Can you even see that? Here, I'll put it there for a sec. So I'm stirring, I'm just gently stirring all the while, scraping the sides and the bottom so that all my bits are mixed really well your glass blowers won't give their scraps? What the what? 
What do they do with them, Joanne? Okay, I'm gonna move this. All it says is powder-free, non-sterile, nitrile, disposable. And I got them off of Amazon. All right. What in the world? That is just not nice, is it? Well, I think we have found somebody for, well, thank you. I think we have found somebody here who is going to sell us scraps. So we may have glass chips again soon. I'm not making any promises, but I'm desperate to find, I've been desperately since I moved here looking for someone to hand over their scraps. So we are working on a source for that. Uh, yes, do I show out, Amy? I will, thank you, Catherine. I will look and make sure we our uh, stock is updated before I leave here today. I'm gonna scrape around one more time uh, because I think we have everything. I'll check and make sure everything's updated before I leave. Okay. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go along the edge of the bottom and get this glass. I'm gonna make sure none of it is hanging over the edge of my canvas. So I'm gonna get this bottom first and you'll be able to see how it just kinda of lets the gold reflect through it once it's covered. And I'm hoping that this resin is really gonna make this pop. Yeah, you know, when I first started doing glass art, the, the uh, I was in Georgia actually, but um, the, Glass blower people were just happy for you to take their stuff. I think since the um, glass art started becoming more popular, and the, then the glass blower folks found out that they could um, sell it, it's become really hard to get it from people. And then they want way too much money for it. Like it's discarded glass, it's not gold. Because I promise you this, when I first started, they were literally throwing that in the recycle. In the recycle bin, they weren't getting paid for it, that's for sure. Okay, we're almost done with this bit of glass. And you see how instead of the glass looking white on the canvas now, it just kind of goes clear and reflects that gold paint underneath. Let's scoot all that in. Okay, now I'm gonna go up to my stem pull some of this forward that's starting to pull around. I'm gonna cover this really well. Actually, I think I'm gonna move this for a sec. I'm just gonna move it over. I'm gonna get that covered. And then I'll have resin underneath where the stem is touching as well. And then I'll put some on top and that will make sure it's really secure to my canvas. So we'll get that resin all the way around. Now I can lay it back in. 
in its place. Oh my goodness, y'all. And then we'll come back over the top and let some of that resin run down that glass stem onto the canvas so it's really secured. So now I'm just going to drizzle. I think we've made way too much resin. <laughs> Hang on, let me spread it and then I'll tell you what I used. Spread all the way to your edges. So pretty. This has exceeded my expectations. And my expectations were pretty high. All right, so I'm gonna look at this real quick. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit down here where I had a little skippy. And now I'm going to, hang on, see how much I have left. And I, I only used probably an ounce, maybe a smidge, teeny smidge more than an ounce. Vicki, are you using art resin? I'm gonna hit this with my heat gun. Actually, I'm gonna use my torch because I want it to be super silky smooth. So I'm gonna use my torch for this. And pop my bubbles. But I will show you the heat gun method. I see a little skippy right there. So I literally use just a smidge over an ounce. So torch method is quite the same. You're just gonna keep your torch on low. So make sure it's on low. And run it over two or three times. I have a little dot again over your piece and then you can come back in like 10 or 15 minutes and hit it again. You can do that a couple of times. Yeah, I only use art resin. Some of the other resins, number one, they're caustic. They're stinky, they're hazmat, and they yellow super fast, and they're really bad and hard to work with. So, who thinks we should add seed beads? What was that? Seed beads, yes. So what do you think? Do we wanna do the crystal luster, or do we want the icy blue? I've got to have more of this. Got to save this label. Let's see. It just says glass seed beads. 10 grams. It's a tiny little jar though, but they are so pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a little bit. I'm gonna put some of the crystal luster in my glass down at the bottom. And I do it this way because trying to tap on that jar, I like to put them in a little cup because tapping on, on the jar, every time I try to do that, they just come out like an avalanche. So I'm thinking I'm gonna start, oh, I'm scared. Oh, I'm gonna start with this. And I'm gonna just add a few and we'll see what happens. Oh my goodness, y'all, I'm loving it already. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna overdo it. I want to just have a few. 
so. Oh my goodness. Need more. <laughs> I need more. Yeah, I think I'm going to get some gold, but I'm only going to put them in my stem area. <sighs> But if you do gold on yours, I would love to see it. Voila. Okay, I'm gonna grab some gold from behind me. Oh my God, I don't have gold. It's all at home. That's too big. Okay, I have some, sorry. So, I'm going to put a little bit of gold. Carol, did you sign up for the, did you register for the pumpkin challenge? If you did, you should have a link for the kit in your email. I'm going to add a little bit of gold in our pumpkin area or in our stem area. Then I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to add a little bit of gold down at the bottom. I don't want to add it to my pumpkin because this gold is not translucent. It's an opaque gold, and I don't want the contrast. That's just me. If you do yours with gold, I look forward to seeing it. So, I, oh my goodness, y'all. I'm going to pick this up and show you. Look. How Gorgeous. Look at that. I am loving this so much, y'all. Heavens to Betsy. Now